Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile with another video. Uh, this is coming into you on Sunday, December 1st, and hopefully this will be a brief one, but if you've watched any of my videos, you know I can talk. So we'll see how long this one actually goes. I uh, wanted to get this one out uh, right away on the 1st because uh, starting December 1st, today, uh, Sunday, through all of the month of December, Trusty Huckster Mercantile is actually running a fundraiser in partnership with Just One More Dachshund Rescue Organization. J-O-M-D-R.org is their website. Uh, Just One More Dachshund Rescue is, as it might uh, appear by its name, a Dachshund Rescue Organization. Uh, it is run by an individual named Dawn, whom I used to work with in a previous life. And she uh, has always been a lifelong uh, dachshund lover. And uh, at the time I worked with her, she had worked her way up to, I wanna say maybe six or seven by the time uh, I, uh, uh, she and I stopped working at the same company. She's now hanging out around the 10 to 12 mark. I sometimes lose track of how many dachshunds she has. And she started a 501c3 organization, uh, Just One More Dachshund Rescue that uh, specializes in dachshund rescues and particularly specializes in senior uh, rescues, which I think is a super honorable uh, and noble um, activity for anyone to participate in. So uh, I can't remember where they're at now, but they've, uh, it's a very small uh, organization, uh, can use all the funding they can get. So happy to do my part throughout the month of December, I will be giving 10% of any sale of a dog related item. So that could be a figurine of a dog, a picture of a dog, or anything that has a dog in it. If you can get creative and find a dog somewhere in a painting, somewhere in uh, some sort of object, I will make sure that that is uh, given credit and 10% of the proceeds uh, of that sale will go to uh, Just One More Dachshund Rescue. If you're interested in the organization, you can find them, jomdr.org is their website. And this video is just gonna be a really quick snapshot of some items. Some of them are already up on the website. Some of them will hopefully be going up this week. Uh, items that I had either already sourced or through my recent sourcing and preparation for this video, I was able to find. So the first one I'm gonna start with is actually, and this gets into the whole discussion of art again, whether it's an etching, whether it's a engraving, I have no idea. Uh, this one is the Shooter's, uh, Shooter's Retreat. No, Shooter's Refreshing, sorry. sorry shooter's Refreshing, sorry, I get the title right. Uh, this is another case where there is the imprint of uh, the plate mark in the paper on the image itself. There's both the name of A.D. Cooper, who was the printer, and this one also has the name of the, uh, what's called the sculptor, and in doing some uh, research on that, that was J.W. Archer's uh, sculpt, that would be the person who would have carved the plate to do the engraving slash etching. Looked at this under a loop. There are not the little dots, so it is not a modern reproduction. Uh, there are a lot of lines that are created to create the lights and the darks, uh, and that is the sign of either an etching or an engraving, and I am still learning. So I, I will try and do a little bit more research on this one, but it has already been posted, and I try to put it at a reasonable price because it's, just, it's a very simple piece. I can actually ship it without breaking the bank. Uh, so I put it in there as postage uh, included. What's also nice about it, there's a little stamp on the back. You can sell it's got a vintage uh, frame job done to it, but the little label shows who fr uh, framed it and it was written in March of 1935. So the piece has a little bit of age, might be a plate to a book from doing some research. I found some of uh, Cooper's work uh, listed on, as book plates, but I couldn't find this one. And there is no page number, so it don't, I'm not saying it's from a book, but that, that's a possibility. Regardless, um, very attractive piece, and there's a little dog in it. So this is one of those qualifying pieces, that's why I wanted to make sure I included it. It doesn't have to be of a dog, it just has to have a dog in it. So this, 10% uh, of the proceeds of that will be, I believe is listed right now online for $35 with shipping included. And currently I am only shipping to the United States, so I apologize for that. When I started prepping for the sale, I did not have any dachshund items at all, and I'm happy to announce I fixed that. And primarily some of these came from the King County Flea Market over the weekend. Uh, this is a nice little uh, porcelain, it's a piece of leftin dachshund. Uh, not been posted yet, but that will be going up online. Uh, we also had an Inesco labeled um, 
see if we can go label, do the little Joc Jocelyn from um, Crazy Lamp Lady, do the little backup trying to get that to focus. Uh, so that is an Inesco Japan uh, remnants of the label uh, for that dachshund. This one I didn't show. The, the, it's one of the cases where the label is wearing off, but you can still see it does say Lefton on there. Uh, this was the piece that actually attracted me to her, the woman's booth. I actually got most of these dogs at the same location. Uh, it's unmarked, but it's what I believe, I think I saw a video one time, uh, Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage had a, um, a piece somewhat like this where I think this is a planter in the back because the way it's cut, it's very oddly shaped inside. So I don't think you'd be able to put like wallet or change or anything. It would kind of, it'd be difficult to get to. So I think this part's the planter, but then there's this little dish at the front. So I think this is designed to be maybe a dresser piece uh, where you would put your change or wallet. I could be completely wrong on that because uh, going from memory it was a while ago, I watched one of his videos, but I think he had a piece that kind of had that same setup and that kind of makes sense. It is not marked. Uh, you can see on the bottom, uh, it's glazed in the middle, but then where it's rusted, somebody put the little felt uh, protectors on there. It's kind of nice in, in great condition, uh, really attractive. Another little dachshund uh, added to the mix. So I did at least get some dachshunds uh, to be able to include into the sale. Some other pieces that I picked up over the weekend that'll be going up online, a little uh, terrier. I don't know if he's an Airedale. I'm not 100% uh, not sure what type he is. He is uh, got a little bit of a remnant of a stamp on there saying he was made in Japan. Uh, so he will be going up. Another uh, terrier. I uh, my recently my uh, in my marriage I had uh, schnauzers, and so I'm well aware of the terrier group. And uh, but I don't necessarily can't always keep track of the different types. So this one. I'm not thinking as a Schnauzer. I think that one is more maybe an Airedale, Celium Terrier, not 100% sure. Uh, it's got kind of the semi-crop tail. What I liked about this piece is it's got the blue markings on what would be considered the front because on the back it is unmarked and then in uh, incised into the side is actually the Japan uh, mark. So it is a Japan dog. And um, if you don't like the blue, you can spin them around and show them that way. Uh, another Japan piece, uh, clearly marked on the bottom, is just this little tiny little vase. It's got a little, what I'm gonna go with is a dog on there. There was a brief moment I thought it might be a cat and then a pig kind of drifted into possibilities. But we're gonna go with a dog because if you buy him, I'm gonna go ahead and make 10% of the purchase price of this piece uh, to go uh, to be toward the fundraiser. Again, he is marked Japan, so uh, that will be listed online. Uh, this was a, a uh, labeled another labeled piece i need to get a little bit better about my dogs i want to say this is a spaniel uh, but i'm not 100 percent sure because i think cocker maybe a cocker spaniel although most cocker spaniels i think of are brown but i think this is a coloration of possibly of a, of a cocker spaniel it does have a hand painted japan uh, foil label on the bottom Let's see if that can get into focus here uh, but it was not a company that I was familiar with, uh, House of Global Art. So I'm not 100% sure on the age, but because it has the Japan um, piece, I'm gonna say it's a fairly safe bet that's probably still pre-2000, so I can still sell it on Etsy as part of the fundraiser. Uh, another piece I picked up, this was at a, those were all, oh no, there's one more from that one booth. And this one is an unmarked uh, little tiny Pekingese dog. Uh, I did recognize it as Pekingese. The really good condition, but the bottom is unmarked. So I'm, I, it kind of looks like a Japan dog, kind of looks like some of the other ones, but he is gonna go up on the site unmarked. Now some of the other booths that I went to at the uh, flea market, got a piece of chalkware. This one, could it be a long-haired dachshund? Maybe, all the doxy lovers, and I'm sure Dawn will tell me if that is truly a dachshund or not might be a cocker spaniel i apologize to any of the dog owners that have this exact dog saying hello that uh, i don't know exactly what it is on the back it is a piece of chalkware it is stamped it looks like it says bossons england i can't 100 percent read that 
Um, but it's also got the date on there, which was really nice. So it's dated 1959. So it's got some nice age to it and it is in ridiculously good condition. The back of it is showing a little bit of wear, but the edges are pristine. I, and it doesn't look like they've been touched up. So, I mean, this just looks really good considering it's age for a piece of chalkware. Uh, another piece uh, I picked up was from Red Mill Manufacturing, Handcrafted USA. Again, Dachshund? This might be drifting into a Basset Hound. I'm not 100% sure, and I should because I used to have a Basset Hound. But um, just super cute. It is stamped on the back, uh, 1989. It's got, the, it's got both a label on the bottom, and it's also got an incised mark on the side. I was did a little bit of research on this, and I came across something saying, because this is, it's not ceramic. It's not porcelain. But it doesn't also doesn't seem like it's necessarily resin. So I was trying to figure out what it was. And somebody said it was crushed pecans. Maybe. I don't know. Um, it's a possibility. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, this appears to have a little bit of a following. These Red Mill manufacturing figures are all made of whatever this material is. That is what they make it out of. So they're all of the same coloration, which for this type of dog, I thought the, the nice brown color was actually really pretty. Uh, picked up a collector's plate. Kind of joked at some of the earlier videos that I actually, as a child of the 70s, grew up around collector's plates. Not something that I particularly search or seek out now because I don't think there's a huge value, but I was really on the look for something that had dachshunds in it because I really wanted to support this dachshund rescue and I figure if she helps, uh, if the, her followers follow my, si my site, they're going to want doxy stuff, not just dogs. So I found another collector's plate which clearly has a dachshund in it. It's called Cruel and Unusual Punishment. So obviously the focus is supposed to be on feeding the child. Uh, it's dated 1987, which take a look at that kitchen. I mean, it's got the duck cookie jar. It's got that great trellis wallpaper. I mean, this definitely is a plate of its time. Um, Cruel and Unusual Punishment from the We the Children plate collection. This, one of those things, hindsight's 2020. You you think of why the plates that we bought in my childhood did not end up paying for my college education. Because this is one of those examples of it is a quote unquote limited edition, but it was limited to 14 firing days. So how big was that kiln and how many times did they fire thousands and thousands and thousands of these each of those days? So when you got 14 days, you ended up with hundreds of thousands of copies. This is marked 0340A, which might indicate there's only 9,999, but they could then multiply the A by A, B, C, who knows? So mathematically, who knows how many of, all of these are out there? It's not gonna sell for much, but I didn't pay much for it because I just really wanted something that would be kind of cute for a doxy lover, that somebody who wouldn't necessarily want collector's plates, they just want something that has a really cute dachshund and some other type of white furry dog uh, in the plate. So kind of cute from that regard. Another piece that I picked up, that actually came from a Goodwill. Also from a Goodwill, I'm not sure if this will be a mistake or not, but it fits within the Etsy requirements uh, for me to be able to include it as part of the fundraiser. It is actually a McDonald's giveaway. It is the Snow Furries from 101 Dalmatians. So somewhere on here, it did actually say the date uh, 1996, uh, so it does have the date on it. I paid $2 for it. It is a little snow globe, um, still with it, with its packaging. It's still got the little base on it, so it, it may, it's, I wouldn't consider it new, new old stock, but it's in really nice condition. You know, if anyone had used it, they did a really nice job packaging it all back up. Uh, it's cute. It's 101 Dalmatians. So if anyone like has Dalmatians, they're of course going to have this as one of their go-to collectibles. But it also will hopefully cross over into the Disney World. So maybe I can actually get some money raised for the rescue using either McDonald's and or Disney to uh, catch people's interest. Uh, and I also pulled two pieces to showcase in the video that were just items I had not shown yet. And I wanted to put them in the video because I have a feeling they're going to get lost. This one almost physically, literally, is going to get lost. I couldn't resist this tiny little dog. 
It is not a dachshund, um, maybe a puppy beagle based on its coloring, not 100% sure. It is marked made, that was my finger, it is marked made in Japan. Um, got the little uh, air pocket, the air hole in the bottom for when it was fired. So he's not gonna go for much. It's gonna be really easy to ship though. So I'm gonna include that and I will make sure it's a very clear picture showing how small he is, but this would just be a nice little curio addition. So that's something I had always had and had set it to the side specifically because I was afraid it would get lost in my inventory. So I hadn't listed it yet. So I found that one and I wanna post that. And then this one I had dug out because a, a Facebook group post, uh, somebody was looking for these and I have this uh, Fisher Price Snoopy toy. You can tell he's a, He's a, he's a big boy. He's got uh, still got the original spring tail. It's got a, a pull a pull string. Not sure if that's original or not, but the, it looks like the chain, um, the ring on it, that actually appears to be original. He's in a little bit of a rough shape. Uh, some of the paper decals and things in there, or you can see are kind of pulling away. Um, so it, it's, it's, he's, he's, he's been well loved. Uh, he's got some good, some good age on him. There's a big one and a small one. This is obviously the big one. And I thought there was a date on this one, but it's not a date, it's just number 181. So that must be the model number that it was. Uh, the smaller one has a date. I wanna say that one was 1968. But when I started taking pictures of him, I discovered that one of his ears uh, had been broken off. Uh, when you look at them, he's kind of designed the same way, like two profiles. When you looked at it, the way it had broken off, I didn't realize it had broken off. It still looked like a little bit of an ear, but when I was taking the close-up pictures of it, I noticed that the other ear was a lot bigger. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna list that one or not, maybe for a few bucks, but I think he'll probably just go into, the, uh, into a booth at some point if I ever get a booth space. Um, but, so this will be uh, going online as well. He'll be a little bit more to ship. Um, if at some point before the month is out of December, if I do end up in an antique store or in a vintage mall, anything I sell that's dog related in the booth, that would also go toward the JOMDR uh, fundraiser. So uh, as I said, I was gonna try and keep the video a little bit shorter. It's definitely shorter than some of the others. Really hope you uh, liked some of what you saw and I hope you hop online to my Etsy store, Trusty Huckster Mercantile, which you'd find at TH Mercantile on the Etsy store. And you'll find a lot of other uh, material, or a lot of other items in there as well. Other dog figurines, as well as a number of different items where there is a dog somewhere in the image. Uh, so take a look, get your microscope, uh, get your magnifying glass out, and really try and help support a great cause and uh, get things shipped out to you. Make, get, get a nice uh, Christmas gift for somebody while giving to a nice charity at the same time. So appreciate you uh, sticking through to the end. Again, this is Patrick at Trusty Huckster Mercantile. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Etsy, and now obviously YouTube. If you like this video, I appreciate it if you would like, uh, comment, and or subscribe to this uh, so that I get myself established as I continue to put uh, other videos out as well. So thank you very much, and I will talk to you again soon. Goodbye.